<laughs> you just killed Lampy Gimpy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dad. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. He is huge. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and I have a very special video for you guys today. I want to share you, share with you guys the history and the story of a deer we call Limpy Gimpy. So, history. I'm, it's just unreal the amount of history we have this one specific deer. The first time we ever saw Limpy Gimpy, he came into a game camera that we had set up trying to get pictures of otters down by the creek. And I think that was four years ago. And it's obvious it was him. He was easy to keep track of over the years because he had a bad back leg. It kind of pulled up underneath him. And Limpy Gimpy was here his entire life on our 110 acre property. Basically lived out his entire life right here close by. I know he traveled to the neighbor some, but um, he's been here for years. And it's so cool having history with a deer like that. And every season we'd get more and more pictures of him and more and more pictures of him. And he wasn't huge four years ago, even three years ago. The deer season of 2021, he hit Houston's radar big time. The problem was we never saw him in the daylight. Now, over the years, like I said, on our 110 acre farm, my kids have been able to harvest some really incredible deer. I do my best to to draw in and hold as many deer as possible. And, you know, we, we've been feeding Lucky Buck Mineral and the Freak Factor from Lucky Buck all year this year, but it's more of a total game management strategy. This stuff does help, don't get me wrong, and I've got a ton of pictures of, of uh, Limpy Gimpy eating this Freak Factor this year, but it's all about holding deer on our property. And over the years, we've had a lot of success at that. Um, Emily has been <laughs> very blessed to harvest some really nice deer. You go all the way back when Weston was eight, eight or nine years old, he killed a stud of a big non-typical old deer. Here we are, early 2023. We're gonna go back to deer season of 2021 when Houston really keyed in on L L Limpy Gimpy. Houston was, what, nine years old? And it was the first deer that he had really ever wanted to target one specific deer. And I kind of joke around on this channel a lot about Limpy Gimpy being handicapped. Listen guys, don't take that for anything more than he just walked with a limp. Limpy Gimpy is the smartest deer that I have ever hunted, period. And that whole season, we never got a single sighting of Limpy Gimpy in person. We had lots of game camera pictures, lots of trail camera pictures. Never did we once lay eyes on him. Now, after the season ended in 2021, which would have been early 22, Houston and I were lucky enough to find one of Limpy Gimpy's sheds. We found the small side, and that only fueled the fire for Houston. He now had three years of pictures of Limpy Gimpy and one of his sheds. And we looked for days trying to find the big side, but we never found it. So we kept, you know, adding supplemental feed and minerals and everything, trying to keep Limpy Gimpy here close by. But like those big old smart bucks do, he disappeared for several months. And as 2022 rolled in, deer started growing their antlers. And we never saw Limpy Gimpy for probably a good six or six or eight months. And as it got close to deer season, I was like, Houston, Limpy might not still be alive. He may be gone. And uh, I just never, you know, you never know with a deer that's got a bad leg like that. He could have been killed by predators, could have been hit by a car. Heck, he could have died of old age for all I knew. But bow season come around October 1st, we started getting some nighttime pictures of Limpy. And then about three weeks into it, you know, we went through, well, two weeks into it, went through youth rifle season. Houston harvested a really nice eight point during the youth rifle season, but we hadn't really had any consistent pictures of Limpy Gimpy yet. Then I, st I was doing some bow hunting and you guys saw on video, um, Limpy started daylighting on us a little bit, getting pictures in the daylight. So I was like, well, I'm gonna go hunting. I'm gonna go bow hunting. And this was like two, three days before rifle season started. And lo and behold, one night, Limpy Gimpy comes walking out.
I just didn't have it in me to harvest Limpy Gimpy. I knew how much this deer meant to Houston. I knew how bad he wanted to, to take this deer. I drew back on him two or three times and every time I'd let my bow down and just, I couldn't do it. And something inside of me was saying, save that deer for Houston, let him have a chance at him. So I did. And I thought it was gonna be an easy chip shot deal for rifle season. Rifle season rolls around, I've got two kids hunting. You know, Emily hadn't killed a buck yet. So we were putting, putting a priority on Emily's hunting. And she hunted hard for, oh gosh, 10 days, something like that. And finally took that really nice 12 point on our Mill Creek property. Let's see this guy. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Heck yeah. So that put Houston back up and we've still got another, you know, well, maybe it wasn't a full 10 days, but we kind of rotated because Emily was busy and stuff. So he got a few chances to look for Limpy Gimpy. But after she harvested her buck, we went into like full on lockdown with a mission of getting Limpy Gimpy. And we had two separate hunts where Limpy came in. The first time, Houston got so much a buck fever. He was had the shakes and couldn't hardly breathe because Limpy was at 100, maybe 125 yards. Had him set up, had him in the scope, and we just couldn't make it happen. Just breathe. Front shoulder. Front shoulder. Then a few days later, he came back, stuck his head out in the field and froze on us for like 16 minutes. But he finally made it out in the field and the shuffle and the bustle and the hunting in the blind. We had does in front of us and I was like, Houston, I, I can't see him. I can't see him with the camera. And I'll take the blame for it. Houston had him in his sights for just a few seconds. And then about the time I said, okay, I've got him, Limpy spun and left the field. And I'm telling you, this deer was smart, very smart. So the last day of rifle season rolls around, Houston passed a really nice eight point buck that most adults would have killed, but he was dead set on Limpy Gimpy. So after rifle season ended, Houston's not an archery hunter. He's a little small to be hunting with a bow. So I was like, I've got to find a crossbow. Bow season, archery season runs through January 15th. And we're just, you know, in the first week of December. So I knew we had time. And luckily, Final Descent Outdoors is a hunting show that I film with and have for years and years and years. And over there, we're sponsored by PSE Bows. So I reached out to PSE and said, hey, you guys have a, a crossbow that you'd like to, to feature or highlight? Because I really think we can kill this buck. And I think if we can get him on a good feeding pattern, it should be a, an easy enough deal after rifle season ends and things, you know, you get all those hunters out of the woods and stuff. So PSE was gracious enough to actually send Houston a brand new PSE crossbow. And he had never shot a crossbow at all, ever. So we're gonna go after Limpy Gimpy with this crossbow. You might ought to take it off safety. Yeah. All right, Houston and I are headed out for our first evening bow hunt with his brand new crossbow from PSE. And uh, we're hoping Limpy Gimpy shows up. Yes. Um, one thing I haven't done, I do need to get on my phone real quick and buy you an archery tag. Oh. I don't have him a buck archery tag, but the good thing is, the good thing is with Oklahoma Wildlife Department's website, I can just purchase a tag right on my phone. Won't take but a second. So as soon as we get settled in the blind, I'm gonna get Houston a tag bought because I forgot. What's up? We're gonna settle in for the next two and a half hours or so and see if Limpy Gimpy shows up. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, we did get Houston an archery tag purchased. Almost forgot that one.
Well, Gimpy was a no-show on our first outing with the crossbow, but that doesn't mean he's not in the area because he actually came in last night. I think I had pictures of him about 1.30 or something like that. And uh, he was in there for quite a while. So we know we're hunting in the right area, approximately. We don't know where he's at in the daylight, but we think there's a good chance he made daylight before the end of the season. Today is actually New Year's Eve and archery season runs through January 15th. But once he goes back to school and things are fixed to get busy again, I don't know how much time we're gonna have to hunt. So we're gonna do our best to see if we can get him in the next day or two. Yeah. I just have one question. What? If he comes in, are you gonna be able to make the shot, pull the trigger? Yes. Yes, that's what I like to hear. All right, let's go get him. Yeah. So we spent several hours getting Houston dialed in with the crossbow and started hunting. Went out two or three times. We had several pictures, but not real consistent, but several pictures of Limpy Gimpy coming into a different field than we had seen him during rifle season. I thought, well, that was the same field where I was hunting him during bow season and I could get him, you know, we could get him in 20 to 30 yards, perfect, easy shot with the crossbow. So we hunted two or three days. Uh, maybe longer than that, maybe about four or five days. Um, and never once laid eyes on Limpy. And he disappeared on us for probably about a two week time frame. Had zero pictures, zero sightings, nothing. I, he just disappeared like those old smart bucks do. So fast forward to almost the very tail end of bow season. We've gone past Christmas, gone past New Year's, and it's like crunch time. We're down to four or five days left in archery season and limpy gimpy shows up back in our rifle stand in that field two or three days in a row morning and evening we were getting trail camera pictures of him broad daylight which was incredibly unusual for that deer because typically he's either nocturnal or he just doesn't come all the way in out in the middle of the field where all the rest of the does and the younger bucks are and houston was like dad this is on a wednesday houston says dad uh, can i skip school and go hunting today i said no you're going to school We've got him on a pattern. We got all the way through the rest of the weekend to hunt. And I said, but I'll come pick you up early from school and uh, we'll hit the woods and see if we can lay eyes on Limpy Gimpy. And here is the rest of the story. It is January the 11th. We have until January 15th to close the deal on this deer. Seems like we've been after him for two years. Because yeah. <laughs> we have, huh? Yeah. We had Houston set up with the crossbow, PSE, Coalition Frontier crossbow, and <sighs> Limpy Gimpy has been here. We switched fields. We were hunting um, a different field for several days. Two days ago, he showed back up in this field. We're back in the field where Houston killed his deer back during the, uh, the youth season and we did most of the hunting here this year. This is where we saw Limpy several times during rifle season. Yeah, so he came in in the morning at 4.47 a.m. And he also came in at like five, no, like 4.30. You just said that all wrong. He came in at 4.30 in the evening two days oh, ago well, yeah. and yesterday morning at like 8 a.m. Yeah. So we know he's using this field again. We just hope we can get in front of him, but we got Looks like three turkeys coming in right now, so we better quit yakking. Yeah. Let's just get to hunting. Yeah.
Houston. There's Limpy. season that would have been an easy shot in rifle season so right now he's out there about 60 yards we need to get him in closer maybe he'll come on in You just killed Lampy Gimpy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Dad. Come here. Come here. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud of you. Holy smokes. I can breathe now. I haven't been able to breathe for like the last 20 minutes. We just watched him drop on camera. Love you so much, Dad. I oh, love you too, buddy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh you my just God. killed my big baby. <laughs> you smacked him, dude. We got to watch him fall in the field. Your first deer oh with a crossbow. Oh my gosh. Dude. I can't feel them. <laughs> I can't believe it. It was so worth the wait, man. Yeah. You got to shoot him with a bow, with a crossbow. Look at that, buddy. <laughs> um, Brad, if you sent us this, thank you for the bow or the crossbow. <laughs> Let's go find him. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it did. Wait, hang on. Pick that thing up. I want to see what that uh, crown broadhead looks like. That oh. thing cut all of our fingers up, putting this thing together. Look at there. Here, let me. Found the bolt. Let's go get the deer. I see antlers sticking up out there. Right now. No, look at how big he is. 
That's the small side, buddy. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! He is huge! <laughs> That's so awesome, dude. Can you believe it? No. I can't either, man. He came in. We got to watch him for at least 20 minutes. Like, nice, calm, and relaxed. No, but from last year's side, right here, he, he only had one sticking out right here. Count it up. Let's see how many points he has. I don't even know how many points Limpy Gimpy is. We've been watching him all this time, and I don't have a clue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12, 13. 13! I love you. That is... And he was seven on this side last year, too. Yeah. All right, get some blood in the new Can Am. It's uh, kind of tall. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I just poked myself. Jimmy's hey, deer are already shedding their antlers. Yeah. If he's not. Hey, buddy. Some things are worth waiting for, you know it? Yep. Well, we made it back to the barn with limpy gimpy and uh i've been looking at his leg a little bit here and i'm going to kind of show you what what's going on with limpy because i'm sure everyone's going to want to know that if you've been following the limpy gimpy story at all everybody's going to want to know what's wrong with limpy's leg this is not going to be a catch clean and cook video or anything like that we're going to we're going to gut him and probably take him to the processor because it's still 70 degrees outside if we were down in the 30s I would hang him overnight and then uh, probably process him myself tomorrow. But with it being in the 70s, we've got flies out this in January. It's ridiculous. But anyways, let's take a look at Limpy's leg. So he's been uh, basically, the reason we call him Limpy Gimpy is he's only been able to walk on three legs for several years. And I don't really see anything necessarily wrong in the hip the hip joint works good um obviously there's not a lot of muscle tone here because he's not using that leg but the injury is here in i don't know if you call that i'm not an expert but is that the hawk basically is up from his ankle i think that's a hawk hawk anyways his knee <laughs> so you can tell it is uh definitely deformed something happened more than likely i would venture to say he either got stuck in a fence got hung in a fence and broke it or maybe got hit by a car once upon a time but there's been um definitely a severe injury to that joint and it's grown over so there you go there's the ending of the story of limpy gimpy i know it, it to me and him we both said it's kind of sad not to see him on cell cameras anymore but we're probably going to be mounting him, so I just told him, if we don't see any pictures of him anytime soon, we can just have a look at him and the house. Bella, you going to make it? You all right? Hmm? There's the end of the story for Limpy Gimpy. I couldn't be more proud of you, son. You did awesome. Heck of a shot. Thank you. Heck of a season. This was all your idea to go hunting this morning. You... Or, well, this evening, this morning when you got up, you said, hey, we need to go hunting this evening. Hey, could you go somewhere else? <laughs> so, I'm proud of you. Thank okay? You. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you next video. Peace.